I want to talk about the deer hunting cell cam craze and using that cell cam, whether it's for summertime, fall, winter viewing, and, uh, and even making hunting decisions. Now, you could even look at, uh, you know, ethically, is it good to have a camera take a picture of a deer and instantly send it to you and allow you to make real-time decisions? You know, depending on the laws in your state, it might be legal, it might be not. Just because it's legal doesn't make it ethical. Um, so there's always that aspect and that angle you have to look at it and kind of decide for yourself i don't like people bashing on this so if i hear read someone that someone's bashing someone else because they use a cell camera you just be hidden from the channel which is fine doesn't matter to me that's kind of your choice but uh, we don't allow other people to bash each other and you know the cell cam craze is here to stay and uh, it's legal in almost every state and uh, it's enjoyable um, i really like it because a lot of times you know number one we're not going out into the woods all the time even during the uh, filming season I call it where Dylan and I are shooting videos right now we're supposed to shoot six today we shot 19 in two days three or four weeks ago to last for a while and uh, so we're shooting on average about once a week um, year-round uh, we're doing that because we're putting out four videos a, 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 a week and so we're out here but then I'm going to clients for 10 days 11 days 12 days out of the out of the month and that's for 10 months um, and then of course we hunt and uh, when we're hunting you know, during the hunting season, I don't want to get out here and change cards all the time. So we often, I like the video camera because we want to see where bucks are coming from, where they're going to, what's following behind them. And I want to see those decisions they make. I also want to see the scrape behavior. I like seeing that they know the exact width of their antlers and they move it around the licking branch. They leave their scent on here. They come in straight looking at this. So if you have a stand nearby like we do right over here and another one over here for different winds and different times of day, morning or evening, then you'll get great activity right here where deer are coming into this they're staring at this not you and your trail camera and not the two cameras that we have nearby because we have a video camera like i said i love seeing that and then i have the cell camera and again the video camera we're only changing the card during hunting season when we're out here hunting but i love that instant view of the cell camera behind us in a great spot and this is a great spot this is a great spot i want these cell cameras in areas that I can hunt you know there's that thought about putting in a hidden remote bedding area but if i have cameras around licking branches and uh, mock scrape combinations with tree stands then i know what bucks are coming from that bedding area or going to it now if you have an extra camera sticking one in a bedding area is not a bad idea one you just throw back there and you let go you let it go for the entire season so there's always that thought but I really like having my cell cameras at stand location because it gives me real-time data for what's going on there. You don't miss much. And that's what's pretty cool too, is when they're coming through here, a lot of times it helps you make decisions and calculations based on, you know, it's really cool because I preach the weather, all weather whitetail book, um, a large portion of what I write about, uh, my algorithm that I infused into the HuntWise app and their HuntCast formula. I worked with them all year last year and that's, I talk about that so often because it's my baby. I like seeing the weather. Well, what's pretty cool is when you see those weather come, fronts coming through, you know, we're, we're 50 minutes apart from here to where we hunt in Wisconsin, but same type of weather patterns. And what's really cool is when we see big winds, high temperatures, extreme storms, guess what? The cell cameras dry up. So if I have a dozen cell cameras in two states, in their close proximity to each other, not only can you see what weather suppresses movement, but you can see exact real-time data what weather affects deer movement positively. And so I like watching it for both ways. You can, instead of analyzing two months after the season's over or a month or six weeks after the pictures were taken, going back and analyzing that weather per that day that you saw a boost in traffic. Instead, when you have eight, 10, 12, six, four, three, however many cell cameras you have popping all at once or not popping at all, it tells you, yeah, this is what makes deer move. This is the weather patterns that help you make decisions on future hunts. Finally, also, this allows you to not miss mature bucks. When I find mature bucks, um, we have various bucks that are watching here. Of course, they're coming during the hunting season, not as much during the during the summer. We don't really want them here during the summer because we don't have the type of habitat they were creating for summer months where you can't build a herd or hunt a herd or influence a herd in any way. I want my habitat geared towards the fall. So we're not getting a lot of summer pictures, but when those bucks start coming on in the fall, which would be any time from mid-September to mid-October, I want to see it. So I want to see those bucks coming in right when they're there. And then what you find is a lot of those mature bucks, they're more part-timers, meaning they might live in this little fringe area and not move much during the daylight hours. They only move two, 300 yards all season 
on a daylight basis every day. Their 95% three mile home range is gonna be after dark. So I wanna know that if he's sitting over in a corner and he's not coming by my cameras that often, or he's not on my land that often, or he's not hitting this water hole, mock scrape, this movement very often, I wanna know the cell camera tells me that he's in the area. You know immediately. Um, I had clients last year, they're um, in a very uh, urban area and those urban areas, bucks are a lot easier to hunt because they're used to uh, human scent, human noise. You can get in on them in small, tight locations. But timing is everything because they might be in this tiny little woodlot over here for a week, this tiny little wood, woodlot, this backyard garden, this little cornfield that's five miles away. They're really moving back and forth. So when you know they're there in that exact moment for that three-day window, five-day movement, you can get in on them. My client last year, they had 184-inch buck that was in a suburban Michigan area. And they looked back at their cameras pulling their card later and for about a 10 day period, it only missed a couple days where it was in there midday, walking to a bedding area near a cornfield and they could have gotten in on it. Had they had a cell camera, it would have told them that. Again, it gets back to the, the efficacy of using a cell camera. And again, that's your decision there. I'm not going to uh, go against you or for you. So consider a cell camera. They're a lot of fun. They might keep you up at night when you get your alert that a picture has been taken. Really cool to get that real-time data, especially as it relates to weather, weather patterns, making future sits based on the movement you're seeing on those cell cameras. And of course, you're not missing anything. And that includes when that mature buck is on your property, in and around your property for a three to five day window. You're gonna find out about it if you're using mock scrapes like we do. If you're using a line mo a movement, this happens to go up to a neighboring bean field and corn over here. This is a bench system where they go back to bed. And so we can expect as the summer progresses and we get into the early season, this movement is going to heat up considerably. That's why we have both cameras on here. We want the B-roll. We want a little bit more about buck behavior, scrape behavior from the video. And then we're getting a cell camera. And, and I know not everyone can afford to put a setup like this on every setup that you have when you have a cell camera and a non-cell. But if you can, it works out great. It's some really good intel that you can have. You can find out when that buck's just there for that short window and make great decisions so that when you go into the hunt, you know that you have that movement there. You know, and you're being efficient with your decisions you're making based on the weather and the timing of the hunt. And we just stuck this mock scrape here. We had a shorter vine, let's say about this big, and it was hanging from a little bit lower. And what you find is, look at the opposite. If there was just a mock vine that was about two feet long hanging there, it's extremely unnatural. And when it comes to getting a mature buck to use your mock scrapes all the time, you want it right in the middle of a trail. You want three quarter inch to one inch in diameter for the vine here, but you want it to look natural. So we actually put a longer licking branch in here. It's seven feet long probably. We raised the line up a little bit. I tied it closer to the line. So this appears to be a lot more natural to a deer, basically just a vine broken hanging down over the trail. Again, we're putting this right at about belly waist high. We have a camera there. We have a camera right here. You know, I always encourage you to put a camera on a tree that's wider than the camera. And you can see right here, this camera looks really good. It's really hidden in with this wide oak tree behind it. So deer won't notice this in any way. And it's even harder for them to look up here and see this sticking out. This is the picture right here. We have a focus down on here, so we're not going to get as much um, any kind of sun spotting. You notice if this vine's moving around a little bit, Chad from Exodus Trail Cameras said he's been telling a lot of people, because a lot of people are using mock vine scrapes, that if you have this focused on the lower portion of the vine, still above a deer's head, you're going to get a lot less movement in the vine right here. You know, it's cool about this. We'll set this up here. I can guarantee you there'll be bucks using this within two or three days. Um, I, they could care less if I'm touching this up here. I don't need to wear rubber gloves for the cameras. The cameras don't hold any scent. Enjoy the process. Try a cell camera out if you haven't used one already. And I think you'll find not only does it provide great decision-making intel for future hunts based on the weather and changes in the weather and what you're actually observing on a daily basis with deer movement and the number of pictures you're getting but they're a whole lot fun, a lot of fun. You can often get other people on your plan so they can view your pictures too, other people in your hunting party. Enjoy it, cell cameras are here to stay. The craze is real and they can be a great tool for your deer hunt this fall. I'm excited to tell you guys about my latest web class. It's how to plant food plots, how to design your food plot program. And it covers everything. And really there's 30 videos, over 10 hours, 11 hours of footage workbook, hats, you know, all that stuff. On top of it, I urge you to check out the link, but I cover five main areas, critical food plot concepts, where to plant, 
how to create, what to plant, and finally how to plant. It takes you through that step by step so you can make your own decisions that apply to you and build a great high quality food plot program this year, whether you have decades of experience or no experience at all.